All right. <clears throat> Welcome, Pascal. Uh, <laughs> Hi. So good to have you here uh, today. Thank you. Uh, I heard heard about you a couple of years ago, I think it was from John John Kemp, and he came back from some consulting trip to Canada. He's like, "There's this guy up there. You gotta. He's just ah. Oh. He just couldn't stop talking about you. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've we've been uh, referring to. Um, the indigenous perspective, the communication with nature, the direct perception, all of these things fairly obliquely, some of us more than others um, over the past, I think, six months now of this of this present of this conference. But um, yeah, you're the first one to actually address it head on. So I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself and, and take it away. And I think I heard you say that you said you would like to maybe be a little bit more interactive with attendees so people yeah, should... i'll just keep the possibility i'm gonna yeah. listen to my intuition but for sure at the end uh i'm gonna do a small exercise and after we well we will have the opportunity for the question so beautiful yeah we'll take it away okay good <laughs> thank you very much yeah okay so hi everybody i'm gonna just adjust my um my view. Okay. Um, that's a pleasure. Uh, for sure, I'm excited um, about sharing what I what I discovered over the last the past years. Um, so really, thanks uh, Dan and the association for the opportunity, and um, I'm really uh, thrilled to to share um, what I'm doing, but what I develop also with uh, my customer because. Um, maybe if i can start with that i think in life we we become um who we are part with the the experience with the people we meet um what i'm gonna share today is you know i had a teacher a mentor who before i had amazing uh grower customer that i work with who are really willing to explore and um um I, my goal today is really to open new possibility for you uh, today for your, um, your business. Uh, no matter you are a grower, you're a consultant, you are just someone who, who love the nature, we have plant on your own garden, so are involved with the nutrition um, uh, area for people. So um, I'm sure, I hope, <laughs> you're going to have um, value from uh, this meeting. So the way I propose to uh, for the, 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 the conference and uh, I is I'm going to introduce myself. I think it's important to just share from where I'm coming because clearly something I want to bring is everybody can communicate with nature, plants or any being. So I want to show you from where I'm coming, just to make you maybe a, um, a glimpse that anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, it's just a question of will after. Um, I'm gonna share, uh, maybe give us some introduction about uh, how does it work, how I'm, I'm experiencing it. Um, and sorry for my French accent. <laughs> I try to get my best English. Um, uh, I hope it's going to be okay. Just have a, yeah. And if you have questions, I'm looking at the, the, um, uh, the screen. Um, Dan and Chris going to manage the question. Clearly at the end, we're going to have uh, an opportunity for you to share your question. Um, probably I'm going to follow through uh, the, the presentation. And at the end, we're going to take the question and uh, it's going to be interactive. But maybe first just put in place um, the, the context and share uh, what I get, what I'm getting, and what my grower uh, getting from this experience. Um, so first, I'm, um, I'm a guy from a small village. I didn't plan to say that, but that's what's coming. And, and that's the beauty that, you know, um, Today, you know, I make a, you know, the headline of the, the, the guideline of what I'm, I want to share today. But what I, I learned over the years is 
nature often know exactly what we need. And, and I, I choose to trust that there is gonna be some uh, intuition today that some stuff that I need to share that I didn't plan, but that's important to share. So starting with me, with the guy from a small village. Uh, so I'm, I'm from a rural area and I think it's it shape who I am now. Um, I'm from a family who are also involved in uh, horticulture, um, not on production, but more on like a mix for, um, for a plant and, and also from a family that uh, we're really grateful for life. And, and I think that's a, a recipe, a keys for really enjoying communicating with plant or any being on the planet. So um, I am an agronomist. Uh, I did my course at university and I start my career with a really standard, you know, working with the integrated pest management, reducing pesticide, uh, you know, trying to bring stuff from outside and to control the environment for the plant. Over the years, I realized that there was some limitation to that. Limitation that we cannot control everything. And, um, um, okay, sorry, I was just distracted to make sure that there was uh, no question. So I realized there was some limitation. And, um, and at the same point, I wanna say that I'm working with organic grower and conventional grower. For me, I'm, I'm not judging in one. I'm, I'm here to bring new skills, new possibility that you can put in your toolbox. No matter where you start, no matter what you're producing, vegetable, I'm, I'm more special, specialized in the vegetable and fruit, uh, but I work in other culture too. And I think a plant is a plant and nature, the soil, that's the same. And as soon, not that as soon, but if I know well, we are all human, so we are not different. So it's just a little bit uh, different in the context, but that's the same. So over the years, I evolved as an agronomist, starting from really um, more rational way to doing it. You know, there is insect, we put an insecticide, we kill. There is a disease, we put a uh, fungicide and we kill. So as probably many of you, if you are here, clearly you are, um, um, open to to work more with the nature clearly so i guess many of you already introduced those way of doing but why i'm bringing that is because uh, before to jump in the communication uh, aspect we can do organic uh, vegetable but thinking with um, conventional thinking example you have insect you kill with natural product. But for me, that's still being against the nature, trying to control the nature. And um, what, I, what I got over the years is, uh, and I'm talking professionally and personally, I try, I'm, I, that's probably the wisdom from a 50 years ago, a 50 years old guy. And I'm, I'm, I, I still have a, a lot of uh, stuff to learn, but, um, it's better, it's easier, it's smoother to work in harmony with life instead of always fighting. So, and what I learned with that um, opportunity of communicating with nature is everything happened for a reason. There is always an opportunity of learning. So, so as I said, I've been uh, 10 years in a high IPM, IPM group, integrated pest management. And over that, after I've, I've, I decided I was more, I wanted to be more connected with my value and, and I started to explore, really explore. I distribute some product from Germany with some uh, more uh, energetic, energical, uh, sorry for my English, energetical uh, aspect to influence the more, the, the process more natural in the, in the soil. And anyway, and after, uh, so maybe to, to finish my introduction, you know, I've, I've worked also on the human aspect. Uh, I've done uh, coaching for family in agriculture because what I observed when I was working with the conventional, 
those part with big farms is sometimes we were able to produce beautiful fruit, beautiful vegetable, but people were stressed out and the children didn't want to, to follow on the family to take the farms. And for me, what's the goal of having nice look vegetable, you know, uh, a farm prosper pro with prosperity, but unhappy grower. And, and for me, that's part of my evolution when I, that opportunity of communicating, communicating with nature comes is my goal is that I want to make grower happy. I want to make anyone involved on, on the agriculture happy. Because I really think that when, when we are deeply and truly happy, naturally, we're going to do good stuff. Naturally, we're going to start to perceive some little detail that usually we don't take. And um, so for me, it's, it's, a, it's a system. We are part of a system. And if I want to take care of the plant and the nature, I also want to take care of the grower or, the, and as I said, agronomist, consultant, anyone involved in nutrition and the people. I want to also take care of the consumer. That, that's a big part of the association, you know, promote a way of doing to take care of um, the consumer and the, the nutrition, the quality on the market. So based on that, um, as I said, I evolve and now in my personal life or professional, I always have been really open-minded to what I can learn. I've been always in mind my intention that happy and healthy uh, grower, healthy and food and uh, vegetable or fruit uh, with vitality, taking care with that with the nature and taking care of the, the consumer. And for sure, for me, that's important too, prosperity for the farms. Because when the money is just a tool, you know, to, to develop your technique, to buy some uh, mechanicals, to, to pay well your um, employees, to, to take half a weekend, you know? Um, so that's, that's part of the whole for me. And it's really important to have in mind for me when, when you look at your farm, when you want to um, go uh, further on the, on the challenge that you can have. Um, so I met a lot of people over the years. One that make a huge difference, her name is Maya Kincaid. That's uh, the person who, who teach me 10 years ago uh, communication with, with plants. And um, it has been a journey since then to just practice and develop my technique and, and learn how I can integrate in my own job, but also how I can bring that for grower to add it in their toolbox. Um, so, and I, I took the course just, just also to bring, because I'm, I'm slowly putting in place um, what you need to be able to communicate to communicate with nature, and I'm sure I'm 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 most I'm I'm clearly sure that many of you already do it. Um, my goal is to maybe give you some uh, experience or tips that you can do it more easily with more clarity. For some of you today, or because the, the, the conference is going to be uh, recorded, so some people can join or are listening, maybe, but not in, in live the conference. Uh, maybe some of you never heard about it or never experienced it. That's the same goal for me. At the end of the conference, my goal is you get enough tips of the basic to do it and practice yourself and really succeed. I'm clear everybody can succeed. And that's my goals. And um, there is a lot of benefits that we're gonna, we're gonna talk later. So, um, so I took my first course on the phone. It was uh, August uh, 2011. One of my friends um, in Quebec, uh, Michael, and Cher Pascal, I've, got, I've been in contact with uh, Maya and uh, she's teaching uh, telepathic communication. That's the way she was. Uh, 
labeling the communication with the plants. And, and, it, and it was through his horse, who was needed the product from Michael from Germany, that we have been all integrate in, uh, introduced. So my point is, before to go to the field, I learned on the phone. You know, it was pretty basic. Uh, Maya told us, made a list of any being you want to talk, any challenge you, has, you have as a grower, as a consultant, and we're going to, one at a time, practice and start to, uh, to communicate and get some information. So I still remember the first course, two, three first course, I realized that, you know, I, I, uh, I was already an agronomist, a consultant for about, I don't know, 15 years. And I knew in my practice would, would not be the same forever. Just uh, clearly, uh, it's going to be never the same. And because my goals with getting the communication was if I can talk with the plants, she's going to tell me, tell me I need that level of nitrogen, I need that, I need that. So it was a, a really a tunnel view of agronomic benefits. And, and that's a part of it. But the main part, and I don't know, you know, I'm clear you're, you, you come today with an idea of what, why you want to learn, why you want to heard about it. And I want maybe just open that, you know, you don't have to, to believe me. I'm, I'm not here to convince anyone. I'm just here to share that amazing experience that is uh, communicating with nature. That's my only goal. At the end of the conference, you can take that and throw it in the garbage. If it doesn't talk to you, you're free. <laughs> I think you would be crazy, but then <laughs> I'm joking. But uh, you're free and, and really bring, bring yourself. You know, you, you choose to take uh, an hour, an hour and a half, you dedicate to that moment, really take that moment to get the maximum of that moment for your life, professionally and personally. So I'm gonna start sharing some practical example, you know, where I, um, I took that uh, skills and how it benefits to my uh, personal life as professionally as agronomist. I'm going to share also some benefits that I observed, that I discovered over the, over the years with the grower. So I still remember the first time, you know, it was my third weeks on you know, course on the phone. And uh, we were now in uh, mid-September. And I don't know you uh, where you're living, maybe in the US or around the world, but in Quebec, there is a winter. So um, at some point, we cannot grow anymore. Uh, maybe late October, you know, beginning of November for cold crop, that's, that's mostly the, the last uh, harvest that we uh, can do. So I was taking my course here and, okay, how I'm going to talk of that with my grower. And as I said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really grateful. I, all my career, I had really innovative uh, grower, open-minded people, always willing to explore, to, to grow better stuff, to have more pleasure to grow. So, and it was the, the summer of the storm uh, hiring. I, I hope I uh, pronounce it well. We know the big storm we hit uh, New York, you know, uh, they lost the electricity. So it, it came also in, in Quebec. And uh, we had a huge impact. Uh, and I remember that grower that I chose that one because it, it was someone always joyful. For 10 years, I know him, always happy. That moment, that day that I'm choosing that I'm going to share uh, what I just learned, he's uh, angry, he's nervous, stressful. So I told myself, Jesus, what I'm going to do. But I catch myself because by, by adding that with your life that you, you really can communicate, and uh, with, with life and really connect with life, there was also a sense of peace. I know it was not only about, you know, bring answer because when I started as an agronomist, um, is there any consultant, no matter the subject, uh, 
you're supposed to bring the answer. You know, you're paid to bring the answer. And often my growers see that I pay you, bring me the answer. What I saw over the years that I prefer sometimes, yes, the answer, but I want to ask the good question. I want to bring a, a new way to look at stuff so that we can together discover what we can do, how we can do better. So that day with that grower, I surprised myself that in few few seconds, one minute, I, no, no, it's going to be perfect. There is a reason why today is angry, first time in 10 years. I'm here to share. And uh, so I just said, maybe there is a reason. And, uh, and right away, it starts smiling. And I was just surprised that I listened to my intuition and I just shared that question. And he starts smiling and he said, and I ask why. You know, now if, if I'm, I'm, I'm losing the control because the other many crop have been damaged and it was not, it was a conventional grower, but working with IPM to, re, IPM to reduce the pesticide, but it was just overwhelmed, but all the spray or the, the stuff to do to take care of the, the, the crop after the, the storm. So he said that, yes, everything happened for a reason. In May, in March, in April, when we start the season, we, as a group of growers, we, we had the opportunity to take a new market. But our farm was the only one who could increase the, um, the, the, the acres of vegetable. So our goals was maybe to go over 10%. But there was a possibility to grow of 30%. And we decided to grow 30%. If I listened to my intuition in April, he said, I'm okay to deal with that disaster happening now. You know, it would be rough, but I would be able to, to manage. But I didn't listen. I listened just in my head that, oh, there is a market opportunity. And now I am overwhelmed. So just like that, it was the start of my uh, adventure with communicating with plants. So, so after I share that, I share that, you know, maybe I have something that I can bring, bring to you and just learning communication with plant. And right away, they said, can you teach me? We went on site and that's the way it started. So the example I have was, there was a, a crop, a field of uh, lettuce, added lettuce, really well damaged, already starting some uh, disease a little bit. And 10 days, to from harvest time to reach the, 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 the size required. And he said, tomorrow I'm gonna destroy the field. Um, and I, I got hooked just after I was, as I was talking on my left side. I prepare yourself, I'm here to share just with authenticity, vulnerability, uh, just be open-minded to what's possible. I'm not, I'm, you can have your own, own experience, but my goal today is really to open that there is a world of possibility today. So I just observed that my shoulder was pulled on that side. And I was learning to teach to my grower. I said, you know, hey, I want to tell you that, you know, you asked me how to do it. Now I felt that I was pulled on that side. He looked at me with big eyes and said, me too, but I was shy to, to share to you that I was attracted, I don't know why, to go to on the other side. And he just said, what, what do we do? We're gonna just go and follow our intuition. Right away, when we put the feet on another kind of lettuce, there was a wall, a wall of sadness. So I open a little bit. When you, you're gonna practice, I mean, gonna teach you soon that uh, how to do it, but the way to communicate, there is many way. I'm not using the word talk. I'm working, I'm, I'm using the word communicating. Because for me, there is different way. You know, with you with human, with an animals, with plant, but maybe it's easier with an animals. We feel things, we see something in the eyes, we have maybe emotion, we feel something. So that's the same with a plant or any any being. You can have a thought that come in your mind. You can have a, a physical, physical sensation. You can have an emotion. 
someone we can hear like a voice. That's not my case, but it, it can happen. So there is different way to receive information to guide you in the situation with the communication. So in that case, we, we felt physically attract and we were aware of that. So the more you're gonna practice after you learn, the more you skill, you become sensitive, the, the more you, oh, I have a feeling I need to go there. I want to see something. So in that case, we felt attracted. We followed the intuition to just jump in that new field and there was a wall. So the experience was feeling a wall of sadness, but at the same time, knowing it's not my sadness. So I, I, I hope you, you, you get it. You know, you're really, really getting that there is something outside, but you can perceive with, with that uh, vehicle, that's the body, you know. And um, so we entered that there and um, that grower share sadness, sadness. <laughs> so, and it was just completely overwhelmed. You know, that's Pascal, I, how does it happen? And, and you just share that there is one emotion in my life that I have, I have difficulty to deal, that's sadness. So, you know, when I said there, everything arrived for a reason, that was another, another case that that grower on the first 15 minutes that I was sharing my new expertise, he got it with what he, he was needed to evolve as a grower, as a person. That, that's my point of view. And that, that's what I'm observing for the past 10 years. And, uh, and I really believe in that. You know, um, um, if you work with the nature, no matter your religion, your spirituality, you know, no matter what you believe, I think most of us can agree that there is something bigger. You know, there is a magic in life. You know, when the, when the spring arrives, no matter you work in agriculture or no, you, you can feel that, wow, something is just starting. The life is just emerging. You can feel it. You cannot touch it. Or, you know, I mean, you know, it's not rational. You just feel it. And, but the way I explain it or I learn it, and I, 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 did, I did a different course and I met wonderful different people over my years who, who teach me different way to understand it. But for me, we can go back just to Einstein. You know, it proves that anything is just made of pure energy. So if, if we had a, like a powerful microscope and I know it exists, but it's not called a microscope, but the, that's just the agronomist talking. <laughs> but, and you put it on your, on your skin and you go deeper and deeper and you go, the first, at first I see skin, but after I see blood and after, but at the end, that's just atom or, you know, that's just energy. So my body is made of energy. The air is made of energy. The computer, the screen is made of energy. The field, the plant are made of energy. So at some point, I'm connected one atom at a time to the plant. So that's how we can feel that, wow, there is some energy in the air. There is, there is something alive. My crop looks alive. Oh, I don't know why, but there is something wrong. So in that case, there was a sadness. You could feel, yes, that, that's what I discover. Plant can have emotion. Clearly, I have no doubt about it. Um, starting for, from that, we were there and said, um, what I'm going to do with that, with sadness. And I, I was starting sharing. And again, we got a pull on the other side. And there was a cornfield, not his cornfield, but from the neighbor. And now I just start laughing because right away, what I could perceive is the field was knowing me. In my first course on the phone with Maya and Michael, on the list that we practice, we practice to talk with a field of corn of another customer that I had a, pro a project and there was a kind of problem. So we practice with that. And from another training other than Maya, I learned that 
all the species together and that's what I experienced but I learned it before and I could validate after that a, sp uh, a specific species can com communicate with other member of the species so I hope I don't, don't, I don't go too fast <laughs> so we got again me and my grower attracted to that cornfield and at the moment that I connect I could feel that it was like a friend who was knowing me clearly was knowing who I was and I asked myself intuitively why and and for me often it's, it's the thought I, I got the thoughts that you talk with his uh, the same species three weeks ago so now that's that's my journey. I started to see the potential, and I'm I'm sharing that with my growers. Wow, Jean Claude, you know, uh, can you believe what amazing world we are discovering today? And I got the image of a a, a family, three child with the, the the mother, the father, with a head of lettuce here, and imagine you know the lettuce gonna have the opportunity to feed the family. And I realized, wow, as they're going to eat, the lettuce is going to become blood and the lettuce is going to experience being a part of the human being. And it's wow. As I finished my center, I turned my eyes. Look at my, my grower. Look at, again at the first field. Together, it's greener. The look of the first crop that he told me he's gonna destroy uh, was greener. Another like um, small miracle, no matter the definition you give to miracle, but something unusual. And again, I started that just intuitively, okay, I, I clearly there was something going on, what's going on? And now I remember my, uh, my course at university where we were talking about all the, the little part of the eyes that can perceive. And in the eyes, there is some part that perceives the frequency. A color, in reality, that's a different frequency. The color red has a different frequency than the color yellow and green. So, and, and for me, when you, are, you, you connect yourself to something bigger, you have more energy. That was another learning from, um, uh, you know, you remember the beginning, I want to learn to talk to the plants to know how much nitrogen I'm going to put. But now that they're just blowing away my vision of what's possible, I realized that when I'm talking, plants are listening. And the conversation about uh, me and my grower and talking about, wow, a lettuce could feed a family and after digestion, experience being a, a human being. Those lettuce heard that and got excited. And they, 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 it's like bringing a purpose. I'm not saying that every plant don't have a purpose, but what I observed over the, over the years, it's sometimes the plants just forgot why they are there. It's, it's often linked, linked, link, <laughs> sorry, with, with um, the atmosphere on the farms. So on that case, I observed that we can really um, inspire plants to have a purpose and help us to our grower to grow healthy and um, heal in some time. Because the fun fact in that case is he finally harvests almost 100% of those uh, lettuce. Yes, he, put, he bring some nutrient, natural nutrient, but he knew, and then I knew that the main point is the conversation that we had and the, the, the new context of living we create for, the, for those lettuce. So, so that was my first day. So, other topics that um, um, I can share uh, was to help to uh, make a better diagnostic. And maybe this time I can a bit share a little bit to you. As I said later at the end, a uh, couple of minutes, we got, I'm going to teach you more in detail. But the main point is 
the first point is just bring the to how to do it to communicate with plants is just you just need to to you want it bring the intention that i want to communicate with that being it can be a plant an animals the soil an insect any a microorganism after it's it's, it's kind of it's practice you know for me i know people who have more uh, it's easier with some kind of uh, species that's the same for me i need to practice more my challenge for myself was a little bit the insect um, but just by preparing to that uh, sorry conference for a couple of weeks i i transformed my relationship with with insect this morning small story but uh, usually I was an example, if I have a spider or an insect here, I kill it. But the more I evolved, the more I realized, well, okay. Is that necessary? So in that case, and, and I know why I wanted to kill the spider. Don't have to explain why, but I'm a bit afraid of spider. <laughs> Maybe the movie, I don't know. So this morning I saw the spider and I observed my first reaction. That, oh, and but because I develop over the years my awareness, I said, well, okay, you can choose to kill it and you can choose something else. And which one of the, the both choice is going to make you feel better? Which one is in integrity with your value? And that's what communication with life, with nature bring. It, it makes you know yourself better as a grower, as a human being, um, you're gonna start connect more deeply and truly with your true essence. And, and, and the point, it's not to bring guilt about I kill a spider, it's, it's not about that. There is no guilt. After 10 years of communication with nature, never, never the nature send me a message of judgment, never. At some point, it was a, a firm message, but never I receive a message of judgment for myself or for one of my growers. Never. There is a compassion of there. It's amazing. For me, it's a nature is pure love. So, so if I come back to that spider, you know, this morning I just choose. You know what? Take a tissue and I put it on it and. I open outside the tissue to let uh, to release the spider, and I was surprised and not, but the spider just went out smoothly and stopped. And I had a true connection with the spider. It was peaceful, smooth. I could feel a friendship, not a friendship, but um, anyway, you know, just a, a, a nice connection. It was the first time of my life that I connect with a spider, small spider. And for me, it was, wow, a new, a new success. A new success because I brought the intention that I want to continue to develop my skills and my weakness or you know what I'm not mastering uh, so much is the insect in some point. So I want to practice. I brought that. One month ago, talking with Maya, preparing that conference, because I was afraid, oh, I'm going to be, uh, if someone asks me a question about insect and I'm not the best for that, what I'm going to do? And I just realized, I'm going to say it. I have nothing to prove. That's my journey. I am evolving. I don't have to be perfect, but I'm just proud. I want to be the best human being. I want to be... So I want to make a difference for my grower, for other consultants, agronomists, or anyone involved in agriculture, the consumer. So, and and no, yeah. So it bring me peace. All that uh, that uh, situation. Time fly. I want to be maybe give uh, some quick other example. So another possibility: uh, a grower had a disease. So an okay. Another advisor crop advisor went to his farm and said, okay, you have that disease, we we'll attack the, the roots, you need to destroy all the fields. And at least for three or four years, no more carrot and there's nothing to do. 
So my grower called me, you know, Pascal, can you come? You know, I'm, I know we have a different way of looking at, at things. I would like to have your opinion. So I arrive on the field and um, I bring my intention because a quick way to say it before we practice is when you want to, to connect with a being, a plant, an animal, an insect, any, anyone, anything, First, just relax. For me, it helped me sometimes just to take a couple of breaths, just be experienced being in my body. Sometimes I close my phone or just the ringer. <laughs> it helped, but uh, not necessary. But so I just breathe and just come back on the present. And after I just bring the attention to connect. I can ask a question or I can just bring my intention to connect with the plan that I want. And it's, it's instantly, it, it comes instantly. I hope that's a good word. So, and the, 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 for me at the beginning, I thought it was really you know, complex and difficult. No, you're gonna do it easily. And um, that's what I'm teaching you. So first, just relax, bring your intention. The more you're gonna practice, the more it's gonna be fast. That's what happened in that case. I was in front of the carrot field and I, I, I just bring the intention to prepare myself to be in communication. But right away, I start to have some problem to breathe. What's going on? Why am I, do I have problem to breathe? But by asking that question, I receive an answer. The process was started naturally. And it said, it's not you, that's the field. Eh? What? Yeah, 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 that's the soil. Jesus, got it. So now I was dancing with my agronomic skill and with my intuition skill. Because the way it's doing, it's um, no matter how you call it, telepathic or for me, in, any, the, in my believing, in my understanding, any being as a consciousness. Maybe it's a bit different than human being, but every being as a consciousness. So any being we can communicate with it. A soil as is home consciousness. So, uh, and for me, it's not important is that uh, Jesus, Buddha, universe, energy, for me, it's not important. So it, it's not in conflict with what you believe. No matter the, the, the label that you put on it, there is something bigger that can gu guide us. So it can be the whole field, can be the plant, uh, can be the nature in general. So in that case, I had difficulty to breathe and uh, I the dance is starting. So, oh, that's the soil. And now my agronomic, oh, there is a lack of oxygen. So that's, that's um, can explain that the disease developed more in the soil because there was a, 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 a lack of oxygen because I don't know your, uh, what, what your understanding, understanding and knowledge about the soil, but most of the pathogen um, experience uh, a better development and a rate of development when there is a lack of oxygen. A healthy soil smell humus like in the forest, and that's a process of decomposition. I hope it's in the same in English, uh, instead of rotting. So, so just by connecting, I got a cue, okay. Uh, lack of oxygen, switched my um, rational brain. Okay, that explained that. Okay, what now, what I'm, do what I'm gonna do? I asked the question and I, it, I receive the intuition, dig a hole. Okay, I take my uh, shovel and start to dig a hole to observe all the field. In that case, it was a, like a, a peat bog uh, soil. This kind, we have this kind of soil in some area in Quebec to grow. So I start again and I dig and I observe that there is different level of decomposition. And with that, you know, the roots have some difficulty to develop also a bit deeper where there is a lack of uh, decomposition. It's more acidic. So again, dancing with the agronomic part and the intuition, you know, okay, more, acid, more uh, pH, more acidic, again, it's uh, uh, make the availability of the nutrient uh, worst for the crop. 
the roots cannot develop in a good way. Physically, also, it was a bit compacted, uh, so the roots cannot develop. So just by one intention of being the field, okay, guide me, there was like a, a dance to arrive to the diagnostic. So based on that, I don't want to go in too much in detail, but we developed a strategy just using the scale of agronomic, but also asking questions. Okay, is that appropriate that we use that product to help the decomposition? Would it be beneficial to, to work the, the soil a bit deeper with a different mechanical? And just listen that, oh, there is a yes or no. You know, I was talking about a tot, a feeding. Um, uh, often what I experience when, when you're gonna practice also, that when you ask a question, it's like a breaker, it's off or it's on. If I said, oh, what that uh, product would be beneficial for the soil in that situation? Uh, you know, if, if, if I, like, I'm becoming like a dead, it's a no. If I can feel the flow of life in me and I, I feel I expand, uh, it's a yes. So it's pretty simple, you know. Uh, so you can test it, you know, professional and personal, personal life. That's what I was thinking that, it transformed all my life. It's not just the, you know, from 8 p.m. to 5 p.m. And after, uh, no, it's 24 hour, seven days a week. It's gonna, it can really transform your, uh, your life. So, um, and maybe another, before you, you, we try, I, I, uh, I make you try a small example for yourself. Um, with that specific field, as I was in the car leaving to uh, go to the, the farm and talk to my grower, I had a feeling that I need to pull down on the road, on the side of the road. I pulled down and it was just an intuition, but you know, I, I developed over the years my just being aware. It's clear that you need with the time to calm your mind. The more you calm your mind, the more you can be, you can perceive that, oh, I don't know why, they, I need to go there. Uh, there is something, you know, you're gonna be uh, more aware and sensitive to the beautiful guidance of life. As I said, no matter the name you would give it, life's gonna guide you. And you have a strong, and that's why when I go to a field, to a grower, I always remind myself, I want that grower happy, healthy, prosper. I want healthy food in harmony with nature um, and wonderful product for the consumer. I always remind me, take 30 seconds. So when I arrive on a farm, it's already started. I know where to go. I know what subject, it, it's, it's flow naturally, really it's flow. Sometimes I, I'm, I start talking about a subject. Is there a problem with that? And grower look at me and it's, yes. And that's the same. Some grower can say, I don't know why, but I have the feeling we need to go to see that field today. And, and that's a perfect field. We discover something can, that, that can improve, I don't know, the strategy or there was a problem. So what I want to bring to, to, to maybe to almost conclude that part before the practice is the human part of it. Plant love us. In that specific case, when I was living, you know, because it was a, a mini field, but maybe one kilometer away from the main farm. Those fields before I left said, can you say to the grower that we miss him? We would like to see him uh, more often or that he communicate with us. So when I went to the grower, I share all the, you know, the diagnostic about the disease and the technique and I was a, a bit resisting it was in my beginning and I'm gonna share that the field you know hey can you come to see me you know that for me I'm really open-minded but that, that was a bit weird it was eight or nine years ago but I share it because I felt that I am the messenger you know I'm yeah and I share that and you start again to 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 laugh and I knew it I think it's almost for a week that I have a feeling I need to go to see there and, uh, and I'm going to do it. And after I learned that, uh, if you remember, I took my course at distance on the phone. So Maya was in Sedona, Arizona. My friend was in another city in Quebec and I was at my home. 
practicing learning to communicate with a field one hour away uh, at distance. So again, I'm not a physician, but you know, Einstein, you know, they talk about there is no distance, there is no time. And that's really what you're gonna probably experience when, when you're in the field that anything you think it's possible. So what I'm saying is there is a reality, there is a clock. There is a watch, you know, we have a watch. So sometimes we, we have a lack of time, but just connecting with a crop, you know, that you don't have the time today to go to the field, but just by, hey, how are you today? And thinking to you, if you have need, needed anything, just <laughs> send me a signal, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. It's really create a connection. And it was, you know, I was talking in my, um, uh, my uh, slogan, I don't know if it's a good, good word, but you know, my the opportunity of communicating is really creating a true part, partnership with nature. Because usually that's the grower put all the pressure on himself to perform to grow food, vegetable, any kind. Or, but the reality is the more you're gonna be um, present that there is a all, you know, you were a part of the whole. And there is something with with a wonderful wisdom alive. You can start to ask for guidance and help. And especially when when you have a challenge, okay, help me. You know, guide me. Do I need to do that? Do I need? Uh, okay, I, I need employee. Oh, where I can find good employee for my farm? And just ask for a sign. Ask for for help. And and I guarantee you, it's gonna completely transform your uh, your uh, your experience. So. Uh, again, last year's I had a grower that uh, it was the first year's growing uh, honey, and he said, "You know, I don't know how to do it." And um, he's a good farmer, but it was the first years, and we went to the field, and there was already small onion, and and the onion said, "You know what? We're gonna teach you how to grow us." Sorry for uh, <laughs> for the the sentence, but the main point is just by starting a connection, a communication with the, um, with the onion, they answer back, you don't have to know everything. We're gonna tell you what you have to do. It's um, schedule a moment to come to see us and listen and just start a, an exchange with us about it. And, uh, and they grow, he, he grew just amazing onion for the first years. And this year, as I was saying that about the, um, you know, the species and the time, there is no time. When we start back the, the, the season, I was waiting for that, that same grower in the field and there was a field of, of onion and I had a feeling I had to have a walk on that field. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning, you know, sometimes I don't know what to do, I just, but I just bring, okay, I ask a question and I, or I just go walk and how are you? I'm Pascal. I'm an agronomist. So sometime, you know, I in um, sunflower field many years ago, I was teaching to a new grower. That's that was the first time I had a sunflower field, and I, I just said um, there was a big flower, and said I share that often. I introduce myself. Sometimes I have the thing I need to say I am the human being, you know, there, you know, standing, because they they hear the something I don't. I'm, I'm pointing the head, but I don't know how they receive it, but they hear a communication, but they don't know where we are. So I had the feeling that I'm here and I was just, uh, you know, um, shaking my hand. And in that specific case with the grower, literally we felt that the sunflower head just turn and find us on, on, a, on the same sign. And that's it. I still remember that it was an organic grower for many years and he said, wow, Pascal, what, what word of possibility of experience did you open just now? I, was, I had an idea of how it could be cool, but just what, what happened with the sunflower head, really, I have the feeling that, you know, thousands of sunflower looking at us and we think that, say more, <laughs> you know, we, we are being uh, happy to create a relationship. It was just amazing. So I don't know what you're gonna discover. Um, 
I don't know at what rhythm. My my proposition is just um, trust, practice, and um, you're gonna um, you're gonna discover a wonderful world. Um, you want to practice? So before we go to the um, the question, um, what I propose is really make you at distance uh, experience communicating with a being, a plant or something from nature. And no matter if you're live with me today or if you're listening to the recording, trust me, it's gonna work. So, um, so what I propose, um, take a moment and choose a plant, an animal, uh, microorganism, an insect, and just choose a being that you would you love and that you would like to communicate it with. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to choose one. Okay, some of you could jump naturally. And my feeling is maybe some of you, you know, a lot of the mind is starting to, and I cannot do that, uh, I will not succeed. Uh, I'm not this kind of person. Anyway, no matter the reason, <laughs> you're free. But I really invite you to jump in the experience and have no expectation of the result, just experience. So five seconds to choose. So once you have that plant or any being you have, just as I was doing, just relax and bring your intention to communicate with the being or the plant that you choose and observe. I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk in two, one minute. Just observe. And don't judge what comes to your mind. Is there a thoughts? Is there a feeling? Is there a physical sensation? Is there an emotion? Are you start smiling with no reason? Are you starting to cry with no reason? <laughs> Just observe. If you have the feeling you, you want to ask a question, just ask the question. Really, it's a dance. Continue just to be with the being, the other plants are. Okay, um, I'm gonna have a look on the, the chat, you know, on the bottom for them who are not uh, familiar with the Zoom on the bottom, there is a, a conversation, I don't know in English, I have the French version. If you want just type few words, uh, some people, who you, who, what you got, what you, what you observe, and I'm gonna have a look and just uh, share that. And no bad answer, really. Don't be shy. Probably if you have something you, you, you resist to share, someone else got it. So be the one who's gonna be proud or uh, <laughs> free to share it. So, okay. So, and then good feeling, expansion of the chest. So, you know, when, when I was talking about the life, you know, flowing, Really, that, that's the kind of, uh, of thing uh, getting. Someone saying feeling lonely, that's a possibility. You know, in, in some, uh, uh, in my beginning, uh, where I was still doing coaching and, um, and agron the agronomic side, uh, I arrived in a field and I felt that the, the, the plant were depressed. So I was, like a rookie in the beginning is going, okay, that's impossible. But it keeps saying, yeah, share that to, with the grower. So I share that with the grower that uh, 
it's a bit weird, but I'm getting that the, 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 the plants say that they are a bit depressive and, you know, with, with no purpose. The grower look at me, Pascal. Look at our family, what we are experiencing now. We, we are facing a big challenge emotionally between the family. And that's exactly what, what we experience. We feel mostly depressed. We, we don't have the passion to grow anymore and uh, we have no energy. So that's where I learned that when you grow, you, you influence your environment as the environment can influence you with your thoughts, your emotion, you, you, you give your color to the, to the, the, the field, the soil, the plant. So, and, and there is no judgment there. I just brought as a fact, you know, the, the, the leaf is green. Is it bad that it is green? No, no. just that the, my car is white. Is that bad that my car is white? No. Uh, so for me, it was just getting an information from the plant that we are feeling depressed with no energy, with a lack of purpose. So that's where the starting point to work. In that case, that information was important for the grower. You know, when I was talking that sometimes it's cool that, you know, it, I was planning that it's going to be cool, you know, uh, get the fertilization, what kind of mechanical, you know, the way to, to, to grow a plant. But at least in my experience, half of the time, it's message for you, message for the grower, message for myself. How many times when I was starting, you know, teaching that with the grower, first sentence I was, I was getting through myself was, trust yourself, Pascal. Be confident, trust yourself, Pascal. Be confident again and again and again. So, um, as I said, I don't know what's gonna discover, but clearly it's gonna be gonna benefit you. If I look at it a little bit um, again with the other stuff, uh, eat in the neck, okay, uh, friendship, companionship, yeah, that you know, that's the plants accepting your presence in a higher level for me you know that's and really being because we we teach that often i teach that to the the plant that they they we we really can talk and when it started it's easier and easier the time that we come back so yeah friendship companionship feeling safe protected for me that's another example in my understanding you know you can be the little human being you know close and you can open your si yourself and accepting that you are part of something bigger. You know, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the trees doesn't start to, okay, I'm gonna grow maximum two apple this year because, you know, abundance is not very good. No, no, life is generous, life is abundance. So open yourself to that joy, that energy, that, you know, that, that those possibility of connecting with uh, with nature and with plants or any being to a higher level. Um, I used to feel my garden was dead, so I changed everything around. Now it's where I go even for a moment. Cool. That that's that's really interesting. That you know, uh, Ellen was see, seeing that you know the garden was dead. That's just a fact. Don't add negative uh, interpretation. The fact is, you know. It's dead. It's the feeling of death. What can I do? Or where I want to go? You know, if I, I think back to the, I don't know if I can give an, another example. Yeah, there was a, a, a lettuce, another grower. Maybe I can give, anyway, that's a grower. And the, the growth was, uh, was difficult to, to go. And uh, for the first time in my life, I had a feeling that just go sit in the field with a grower. So again, I was a bit shy, but I trust you, you know, over the time, I, I trust that no matter, sometimes the message can be weird in my, now it's, it's not anymore, but at that time when it was my beginning, I'm going to ask my girl to, to sit. So I said that again, my girl started to laugh, but he trusts me. We develop a, 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 a partnership and, and confidence with the time and we sit and naturally I just wait. There's nothing. And I got a question. How was the, the condition when you plant those lettuce to 
five weeks before and said, yeah, yeah, and he's a bit shy. Yeah, you know, it was a lot of rainy, rainy, and we pushed a little bit, you know, the sword was not ready, but we were stuck in the schedule. So we had to plant. And he felt guilty about it. I can feel it. I see it in his face and I can feel it. And now he's feeling guilty because on the schedule, well, is is in charge of the, the production and there is a brother in charge of the sale. And he's a bit stressed because he said, I'm going to have my letters ready for that date. And now it's maybe one week or he's, he's later than expected. So we just start to share that. And I, I, I got a feeling that, do you realize how, um, you, how hard on you you are? You're, you're an amazing, honestly, I know you, you're an amazing person. You're an amazing grower. And that film, the letters are good. They are just a bit behind the schedule. And he just realized that, yeah, I could be more, uh, have more compassion for myself, being proud of my commitment, being proud that I'm, I want to learn, I take action. But sometimes you don't control everything. And at the moment that he shared that, for the first time, my, I took an energy course, you know, for the health. But in that specific professional way, I saw a flow of blue energy for the first time. It was positive. I, I told him, do you see the energy? And he says, yes. For him too, that was the first time that he, he see uh, blue energy flowing. So, and he, he texts me or he called me uh, a couple of days later and Pascal, the crop started to grow again and it's going to be okay. And I'm, I'm, I put again some natural, but I know it. I know it's not the product. I know it's our conversation that we're in the field and we experience it. We saw the energy, but there was a, so, you know, I have go, goes, uh, I don't know, you know, you know, the work, you know, my skin, you know, uh, that feeling that, wow, yeah, something happening. I know it. So that's another example. So, uh, okay, if I, uh... yeah, beautiful. Uh, so, a uh, goosebump. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, what I propose, I could transfer to Dan, maybe if you're ready, and uh, you can take the, the last um, moment to uh, if you have a specific question, and uh, I'm gonna try to answer the best that I can uh, to conclude the. The presentation. Thank you for everything you've said. It's really, <clears throat> I mean, it's. I, I. I think it's inspiring and and it's um, it's probably vulnerable, but but it's it's um, I I certainly um, I don't think I, I I don't disagree with anything you've said. Uh, I I try to say it in my own words, but I really the the it just it's it's so important. It's such an important piece of this broader puzzle. Emmanuel just wrote this um, piece about our ancestors were in tune with nature and may have mastered communication with the natural world. I think, you know, as we've been talking about indigenousness, you know, from the very first presentation at this conference, there's the colonized mindset and the indigenous perspective. I think a lot of it is exactly what Pascal was talking about here is that ability, willingness, vulnerability, sensitivity to life around you. And that is, I think, in, in my perspective as a, you know, someone of genetic European descent, I don't, I don't think I can't be indigenous. I think we all can be indigenous. I think it's whatever your word is for it. It's that, it's that way of being. It has nothing to do with our genetics uh, per se. So I just, I thank you, Emmanuel, for, for making that point. And I just wanted to share that. Um, we've got a couple of questions here, uh, just three in the Q&A, so people should feel free to start posting there. Uh, PR says to you, do you, do some of your intuitions come to you through dreams? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to PR they do. <laughs> but, but, but does this mean that for you, um, yeah, it can be, that's yeah. where don't block yourself, you know, don't stop yourself. It's going to be your experience. Yeah. My goal today was just to open a new world. And the more you're going to practice, you're going to get uh, experience. Maybe I can add on that is 
in my believing, and that's what I observe, is there is a physical part, but clearly there is a spiritual part. And I believe we have a soul, we have a consciousness, and I think that's the same for the plant. So, and if I have an advice for your life, professionally or personally, slow down. Give you moment in your life where you slow down. Because the more we slow down, the more we allow to perceive those guidance through dreams, through feeling, through, through thoughts, through someone who knock at the door and, uh, hey, I'm selling that. And you were trying to, to buy that project for months and there was someone knock at the door the day after. So um, I realized that the more you surrender to life, and, and I'm going to focus more on this, the, the, the professional part, but that's the same for the personal. I observed that the more my grower surrender and really uh, make one with, with nature, they have less problem. Because I didn't talk about it, but you know, the, we had a, uh, in the beginning a, a conversation with the bacteria uh, who caused a lot of uh, loss in many crop, uh, lettuce, pepper, coal crop. That's the same kind of bacteria, but with different species depending on the crop. And at the same time, I was uh, doing coaching with family, so the agronic and that. And when I asked, why are you there, that bacteria? You know, I asked to the, it was a, a xanthomonas, if maybe some researcher, or, anyway, some people know it, but that's the kind of xanthomonas, that's a bacteria. Clearly, it, it said, we are here to bring back the roar in the field. Say that again. We are here to bring back the grower in the field. By creating a problem, the grower has to focus on his main purpose, take care of the crop, not repair the machinery, not uh, sell, selling box of something. There is something inside, that's the crop. And um, with those three family, we had some uh, emotional issue that we work it out. Everybody, you know, as I said, uh, I'm, I'm so, uh, what's the word, Bless. you know, the, the, the people, the customer who come to me are so open-minded. They, the, they are always ready to work on themselves and on their farms. So on those farms, we work on the human side and we work on the economic side and the disease disappear. And just to conclude that small example, Two years after those episodes of um, disease uh, with that bacteria, the, the grower, the same one of the three grower called me back, Pascal, come on. We have the same problem. We're starting to lose uh, some lettuce with the bacteria. So can you, can you have a look at, I slightly remember that, you know, we had a conclusion there about, about that. And so I arrived in the field and with my doubt, but also with something that oh, trust yourself, trust in, trust in nature. So we talk a little bit and um, he said that it's only for the last two, two weeks we have a disease. And, um, and I, I have think, you know, we talk about the agronomic part, but what about if we take two minutes, we be with the field and we share after. And, and that's the kind of grower that's usually, you know, that's not this, this type of, of things, but he trusts me and he want to solve the situation and he's willing to explore. So we take two minutes and I, I see him, you know, like dancing and, you know, uh, just the opposite of being calm. <laughs> and I, okay, wait, give him these two minutes. And after two minutes, he, he, he turned around and share, got it. Those crop that we have problem, it started with my father uh, being on the tractor for the plantation. Usually it's me or another person, but we were just overwhelmed. So he helped for those harvest crop. And the point is not judging the father. The point is my father is, is older. He don't hear very well. He's stressed. He, he, you know, he, he puts stress to all the team. So I'm clear that that problem come from all the stress that we implant at the, the plantation. So he said, tomorrow, 
I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to take back the control of the tractor and take care of my, my, uh, my team. From the moment we harvest crop with the plant, with uh, that, the, 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 the sun on the tractor, no more disease. We did nothing. So all the crop with a stressful environment develop disease before and after with no stress environment, no disease. So I'm not saying it's always emotional. I'm saying it's a system, you know, I didn't show it, but for me, you know, it's a system that going to influence that's in French. I'm going to launch it in my website this fall, but just an overview, you know, for me that I made a, a what are the ingredient on the, the, the sorry for the word, uh, topics <laughs> that gonna influence or important for a healthy plant. The air on the soil and outside, the water, the, the life on the soil, in the soil, on the leaf, the, the physical environment, you know, that the, the roots can grip, the nutrient, the, the, the and harmony, you know, the globality of the nutrient, the sun, and for me, there is two others. This one, that's our intention, our emotion, our what are we asking? If we believe we're gonna have problem, I trust you, you increase your probability to have problem this summer. If you believe it's gonna be right, and if there is a challenge, I'm gonna learn from it. I trust, I, trust me, the, the, the number and the intensity of problem gonna decrease. I'm clear about that. I observe it with the farm that I'm working with a more long time. It's, it's, uh, it's more natural. And the last one is, you know, connecting with the whole. As I said, no matter our spirituality, religion, really make the, the, the nature, remember them, their purpose, and, and make the, the, by our intention that they are alive. And I'm clear, if you take care, I have in mind all those subjects, the probability of succeeding in what's important for you, no matter the subject, Gonna high, gonna be much higher, and as I said, if there is a challenge, that's okay. That's part of life, but just learn a bit, but get focused on. I'm going there. Yes, there is. I need to stop here to manage that, but that's just a teaching to to get what's important for me, and uh, that's it. So then I, I give you back. Yeah. The... <laughs> uh, we got four questions left, but if each one of these takes 10, 10 minutes to to. Uh... Answer and completion. We're going to be out of past out of time. Um, I, I, I love. I just. I love. I love what's flowing through you, and I just. I don't. I don't need to emphasize it, but I just. It's really. I'm very passionate. <laughs> I'm no, no. I, I. I just. I. I'm. I love your voice. Um, Thank you. Uh, Greg asks, uh, how can I successfully ask rabbits and gophers, and birds not to take all the vegetables and fruits? They don't seem to listen. <laughs> um. For that answer, I ask guidance. That, that's a, a practical example. I didn't know the answer. I panicked for five seconds and I told myself, no, what's the answer? The answer that I got, and I encourage you to test it, is first, be with the rabbit, with the upper, you know, be with the challenge. So don't try first to stop them, just be with them. And I, I, I'm, I, I'm sure you're going to get some insight. Maybe, maybe it's going to be, you know, give us that part and I'm, we, we, you can take care of that, that others. You know, make a deal. Or, but at some point, you can just ask them, you know, uh, in 30 seconds, I had a house, another house, uh, and one summer, all kind of animals come to that house. I, I hire someone to uh, trap them and relocate, relocate them in the forest uh, uh, further. And it was my beginning with, with Maya. And at some point, okay, Maya, what's going on? And we, we had, she, she teach me, she helped me to have a look. And those animals were just loving the, the good energy of my family. So there was no problem, but it was just loving my family and they're staying, sticking around. So 
it took a couple of time, but we had conversation uh, to, you know, stink, you know, the, the black and white animals, no, that, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, skunk. skunk, we call them in English. Skunk, yeah. skunk. So, so we had to say that, you know, make a deal that, okay, you can walk, there is a lot of feel, but that's the um, limitation of my, uh, of my land and please respect it. I love you, I respect you, but that's my house here. So that just some tips, but the first time be with them and see, have your intention in mind and listen to the, the road, the path. Yeah, listen to what comes to you. Yeah, I remember being, you know, 20 years ago in my life, listening to people speak about these kinds of things and being extremely frustrated because I had no idea how to do it. Um, and I don't know if it's just life or, or what, but it's, I, I mean, I can, I'm just, maybe I'm sensing some people's experience, perhaps there's a desire to, but when you say, just still yourself, you know, like, if you don't know how to do that, <laughs> you don't know how to feel the energy in your body, it's difficult, but I don't know if we have time, it just yeah. it's coming to me. No, is there something specific you wanted to say? Yeah, that? they're just saying that, you know, unconsciously, some, some people, sorry for the word, <laughs> on, the, on the background, you have an intention that, oh, my life is crap and I'm frustrated of all those things. You're generating without knowing frustration. Yeah. So that's, that's an example that, oh, the situation challenged me, but if I look at my life, okay, I need to get rid of that frustration of that anger observe it, release it, and everything around gonna transform, so. I know, I, I just, I mean, many years ago when I was, you know, much more actively farming myself, I, I, I remember catching myself thinking, you know, when I plant my vegetables, you know, there's one way of thinking, which is I'm gonna make this much money, this much money, this much money off of these crops. And I just was like, that's not actually the way to do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm going to be producing an amazing amount of wonderful food for people who are going to be, um, you know, nourished by it. And these plants are joyful for the opportunity to be, they've chosen this incarnation. You choose to be a lettuce seed or an onion seed, right? You just like, you choose to be a pig and that's going to, and you, as in my mind, I think as similar to yours, there's a consciousness, like this is, we've chosen this incarnation. And so if you say, the onion wants to be, you know, eaten. It has this whole desire to be of service, um, you know, coming into the farming, <laughs> yeah. having that intention when you plant is so important. And as you care for the plants as well, yeah. you know, you can do the math in your head about the profit and the, you know, paying the bills and all that kind of stuff. But, but really just that intention of like, really, are you dealing with a piece of plastic here or are you dealing with a sentient being and, it's not going to hurt you to just have the thought and you don't have to say anything to anybody else. So you feel embarrassed, but I strongly recommend. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. And rapidly that often I see grower, we take care of the crop, but they don't think unconsciously that they deserve that life to took care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So please, you do wonderful, you know, you, you are nourishing people. Ask the best for yourself, for your family. And it's food, it's the good people, it's, it's enough money, you know, prosperity to develop. But really ask, take care, take care of my farm. I'm going to focus on taking care of the plants to grow healthy food and, and help me. And I'm clear also it can make a difference but because that's often something that I see. So. It's not, I have to stress out to do it all myself. No. It's I'm doing good work for the world and I deserve to be supported and I will be. Yeah. Yeah. Just those are the, <laughs> those are, <laughs> we've got five or six questions here. I'm not sure in five minutes. Do you want to see which ones you want to respond to? Um, the COVID, uh, yeah, I can just say that there is a reason. Clearly for me, that Maya I wrote the question. Matt says, yeah, a bit obvious. Yeah, have you attempted? Obvious. Have you at uh, can you read it? <laughs> have you attempted to communicate with coronavirus? If so, and 
if you are willing to share, what message did you receive? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to just share that my mentor and friend, Maya Kincaid, had one in the beginning. And mainly it was humanity, in some way, ask a way to slow down, to look at our life as individual, as a society, as humanity. So I'm not saying that what we experience and what we are seeing in that different place, it's cool. And my point of view, I'm just saying that what, what Maya got with that communication talks to me that there is an opportunity to learn and to stand and to um, collaborate as a individual society and humanity and make the change that we need to do. Because often the message I receive is slow down. So what about if life created something to slow down the whole planet at one time? Why not? I'm not saying that's the truth. I'm just saying observe it if it's reasoning for you. So one could argue that yeah the more the faster we go the less we're connected to nature and the more imbalanced is the reality we're creating and so that would you know we we're looking outside to fill something in the inside yeah when you you know i don't know which one but someone sharing with the experience wow i feel expanded Expensive. when you connect with nature exactly. yeah. you fill yourself of, of life of joy of love you don't need it at that specific moment you don't need anything else anything else so if you bring this as a practice you're going to make different choice do i need a new car i'm not saying that it's bad to buy a new car i'm just saying do you buy it because you like you love the car or you you buy a car to fill something empty inside and as a grower as a consultant researcher you can make your choice based on your what you think or your emotion you can make your choice that I, I feel that's the right thing to do. This is one of those deep metaphysical points where the question is, is it better to push and rush and try to do something of some meaningfulness or to live a simple good life and be happy? You know, what, what is actually the best thing you can do with yourself? Is it trying to save the world or is it actually just <laughs> being the solution you know? both, but or is it yeah or the only way to save the world is to be the solution <laughs> but 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 yes you can save the world being stressful and you can save the world one one step at a time and and appreciating every step that you go through so yeah uh just one question here at the end martha said uh maya's name i think that was asked and answered in the text maya kincaid Kim K-I-N-C-A-I-D. Uh, I think you know that uh, family name, but uh, yeah. A wonderful person. Great. Um, well, thank you, Pascal, for your presence and your uh, insight and your um, <clears throat> perspective. Um, yeah, any final words you'd like to share with us? I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Dan. I want to thank uh, your organization. I want to thank people who are there today and who are going to listen to uh, that recording. And clearly, I want to thank the nature and all my grower and all the people who contribute to who I am uh, personally and professionally uh, in my life now. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, um, thank you all. And thank you. Okay. <laughs> Great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.